We are the ashes, we are the fire, chapter five. The newspaper staff goes to Roxy's diner to celebrate the last day of school when I make an excuse. They'll constantly be checking if I'm okay, like they have since the sentencing, and of course I'm not okay, but I'll end up assuring them that I am. Anyway, they'll spend the rest of the time talking about summer intensive in Denver. When Miss Lim first told me I couldn't go, and worse, that I couldn't be editor of the paper next year, I was pissed. I'm over it now. There are too many other things to be furious about. It was worth posting my unauthorized editorial on the Oracle website, especially since Summer Intensive will be a nonstop parade of instructors telling high school journalists they can change the world through the power of words. They can't. I push out the double doors and into the June gloom. Too many people crowd under the overhang at the bus stop, so I stand in the drizzle and ignore my phone when it buzzes. It won't be nor. Without the scheduled six-week journalism program, the summer stretches out before me, vast and open, in a way that feels more oppressive than free. It can't be worse than last summer, though, when the investigation was underway and Husky fans were pissed about the preseason off-field distraction. Something bumps my shoulder and I stumble into an old woman next to me. I'm sorry. I reach out to study the woman, who smiles graciously but also mutters, Piero Pickle, as she moves away. First time I heard that, I thought my Tio Gallo was calling me a pig, as in fat. And Poppy had to explain that the expression means clumsy because pigs always walk around with their nose to the ground. God, some are rude, says a voice behind me. And then, I'm so sorry for my friend's uncouth behavior. Jess from my English class stands with her shadow, a girl named Summer with a permanent scowl. Not sure I've ever seen her smile. Maybe when she goes to college, she'll change her name to something that suits her more, like Astrid or Zelda. Like, college is this big chance for reinvention. It's not real. Jess nods at the suit of armor in Summer's arms, which is shoved, which is what shoved me into the old woman, as though I thought it was an actual medieval relic. Just foam. You're on the paper, right? The bus pulls up. No, I say, I'm not. I get on the bus, slouch into a seat next to a middle-aged woman absorbed in her book. She's the sort who probably followed the trial obsessively, knitting pink hats while watching the news, but there aren't many seats open, and the woman doesn't look at my face. Justin and Summer get on, and I avoid their eyes as they pass. If you want to joust, you'll have to get a real, you'll have to get real armor, Jess says, their voice carrying two rows up and across the aisle. I don't want to joust with these those assholes, Summer says. I want to run my longsword through their guts. Jess laughs. Look at you, Lady Snowblood, Summer gasps. Do not associate me with that male fantasy garbage. Fine then, your Margaret de Bruxix, they say, with an exaggerated French accent. And Summer laughs at the reference. Could be a feminist icon or a regular on the Ren Fair circuit, for all I know. I've been so absorbed in all things legal justice for the last year and a half that I'm, a waking, that I'm waking from a coma, totally disoriented to a world of normal teenagers. They speak in a completely different language, a language of happy lives with happy friends and happy hobbies. They shove earbuds in and drown their unbearable happiness in white noise.